This week for NFL DFS NBA finals and preakness edition of the sports gambling podcast is presented by my bookie.ag. Winning season is back, and my bookie is now offering a 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. That's my bookie.ag promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also brought to you by BetQL. Want to get an advantage of the sports book with NBA, NHL, college football, MLB, and the NFL back in action? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. Head to betql.co and enter code SGP20 for 20% off your first subscription. That's betql.co, promo code SGP20. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over to aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money greens, my partner in picks, right? Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Tout, 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 tout. It's the week of touting, Sean. Yes, it is. We had a reason to tout on the NFL recap show. We had a reason to tout on the college football picks podcast. And of course, we have a reason to tout on the DFS podcast. Why? Because your boy, Ryan Real Money Kramer, took down the big boy. Yes. A cool single stack of high society in my pocket. And if courtesy you of DraftKings, promo code if, SGP. If you don't know what the uh, big boy is, of course, it's a oh, they know hundred dollar millionaire maker contest or, well, or hundred dollar you know, winner take all. Ten people in there for yes. now. I've heard people rumbling. Do we make it twenty? Top three get paid. Couple of people have not gotten in. I I pick my spots with the uh, big boy. Sometimes I'm in. Sometimes I'm out. I'm I'm circling this what week. Possibly we, making a move. Do we stretch it to twenty and make it top three? I I think I think uh, some hashtag Dejans only hashtag Dejans only would like to get involved in that. Or do we go fifteen top two? I like twenty top twenty three. top three. Twenty top three makes sense because I think the first prize will still be north of a a, a C note or a, a grand. So uh, I, either way, I took it down. I took it down last week thanks to Mister Unlimited himself, Unlimited. and he's been having an awesome fantasy football year. Josh Allen, of course, is in our window. In our studio monitor, if you're watching over at youtubecom sports gambling podcast, also standing in our window because he's yes, the weird guy. Exactly, he's just everywhere. And again, bringing it back to me, nominating Josh Allen, number one fantasy football quarterback for the season. Mm-hmm. It's crazy because that prediction would be right if it wasn't for Mister Unlimited. 14 passing touchdowns for Russell Wilson should have been 15 because DK Metcalf had that ball knocked out of his hands. Wow! But uh, which, there, by the way. 14 from Mahomes, 13 from Manning. Both went on to MVP seasons that year. Yes. And uh, we've been all over Russell Wilson, all over all over uh Josh Allen. And it's it's pretty crazy because Josh Allen is uh I, I think whatever the pace is, whatever, he's third right now for most fantasy points scored in a season all time. And number one is Russell Wilson. Yeah. Like that's kind of the crazy numbers we're been having. We've been having, and a lot of it has been the scoring's been super high. It started slow in the 10 a.m. games, uh, but then it really heated up, especially once Big Dick Nick got in there and started swinging things around. But really, it's just been the NFL, and God bless them, have said only call a penalty if yeah. you really think it's a penalty. And the games have been, you know, considering there's no preseason, not that sloppy Too big, and, and yeah. just pretty clean games. No, no penalties. But also I think two of the bigger questions you may have had coming into the season is a, are they actually going to let Russ cook? Yes. B can Josh Allen progress as a passing quarterback? Also, a lot of shade be throwing at, at his being thrown at his regression around the rushing touchdowns. Not sure if it matters if he's going to be throwing the ball like this. Well, not sure if it matters if they're going to let the Rams get back in the game and cause me to have to sweat and, and get a little <laughs> bit of extra extra sauce on the end there. But yeah, I mean, I we came into this season. I think we both were higher than the the cumulative on Russell Wilson and Josh. Allen. I thought I was coming in hot on Josh Allen and having him fifth. Yeah, you had him first. I had Russell Wilson, I believe, at number three. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's their year right now, and I, I don't see how it, the climate in Seattle is perfect for fantasy football because the defense still defense appears really bad to and not be ready to play at the at the top level. Friend of the program, uh, Alex from Kansas City. <laughs> 
Uh, he I put, saw he was chirping again. He's, you know, he's always chirping, make sure and we're giving Kansas city the respect they deserve. And of course we had them in the circuit contest where we 11, three and one. I was going to say, what's he getting mad about? I, you know, again, he's a, he's, he's a diehard chiefs fan, but he had a great tweet and kind of pointed it out that the uh, Seahawks kind of remind him of the 2018 Kansas city chiefs. And you remember that was that first year where yeah. Mahomes really started going off. They put up a ton of points and fantasy points because again, they were in a situation where their defense couldn't stop anyone. So possibly a concern for the Seahawks when it comes to the playoffs, but regular season in fantasy, they're still winning. They're still covering. What are we worried about? Shane? I, I mean, what I'm are just we worried about I'm, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you and just pointing out that the defense is helping the offense, especially and, and, when it comes to And just to last fantasy. thing I'll say, I was just doing my weekly. Let's scroll through the millions of best ball teams. Which, by the way, how great is it? You oh, just get so a fun. recap Tuesday, and, and it, it dawned on me that I actually I had two two lineups that I went Russell Wilson, Lockett, and Metcalf. Those teams are doing well. That's all. Just wanted to let you know I'm doing well, Sean. Yeah. And uh, I'm doing well as well because Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, let's go, baby. And if you're listening to our picks, uh, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, We're, we've been on fire and we've been cashing in over at mybookie.ag. Coming off a two and one prop night from the Monday Night Football Props podcast. Lamar Jackson couldn't get me that second touchdown. Hey. Doesn't matter. Still cashing over at mybookie.ag like I do every week so far in the NFL, keeping the streak alive. If you want to head over to mybookie.ag, I don't know why you're not already over there. Live in game wagering. I mean, they really have it all college football, NBA finals, which we'll be talking about later. Preakness. Got to bet a little bit on the ponies. Man, again, another just awesome week. Wednesday, Too much. Wednesday Too much. normally nothing going on, but we got the NBA Finals, Thursday night football, and then going right into Friday, more NBA Finals, Saturday college football, the Preakness, and then an NFL Sunday. Are you kidding me? Head over to mybookie.ag, use a promo code SGP to play, win, and most importantly, get paid over at mybookie.ag. Joining us on the line, winner of the uh, DK contest we ran, got a hundred dollar cash prize and a chance to come on, tout his lineup and to throw out a uh, Millie Maker lineup as well. Jason Swoboda, Jason, congratulations, man! Thanks, Sean. Thank you, Ryan. Um, looking forward to this and uh, hope we have a, a good time going over our lineups. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that. Didn't didn't take a lot of time with the thank you acceptance speech. Right <laughs> to the point. He he understands as a listener wants to get right down to the stone. I, I'm sure, perhaps in your Millie Maker lineup last week, you might have listened to me and done well. Uh, but I, how did you do yeah, it? I did. How, how did you do in the Thursday night lineup, Sean? Before we get to that, because that that's that's where the money was made. Where here. was I? I? I think maybe twentieth. I, I, I kind of did okay, nothing crazy. Jason, what did what really uh, did well for you in the Thursday night showdown DFS lineup? Uh, actually, the lineup I made that uh, won me the chance to get on the show. Uh, that was my best lineup of the night. Hell yeah! How many points did you score? I, mean, I think it was one oh. Eight somewhere around there, one ten. That's pretty good. What's up with DraftKings? Just not letting me go back and see history. I don't know, Ryan. I'll I'll, I'll bring it up with My them next goodness. time I get them on the line. My All right, goodness. let's do it. Week four DFS. Lot to go through. Kramer, I'll let you kick things off. Who is your starting quarterback this week? Well, you know, you have some options here. You can you can look at you can scroll through the list of quarterbacks and and try to play someone who isn't named Mister Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's what I did this week because I stayed in that matchup though, because I saw Ryan Fitzpatrick only 5,400. Wow. Have they not watched this Seattle secondary? Have they not watched this perfect fantasy climate for Russ to cook? Here's my, I'm a little concerned. I don't know what Russ is going to be cooking down there in Miami <laughs> might not be the kind of stuff you want to have for a pregame meal. So I went Ryan Fitzpatrick saved a couple thousand. I mean, $2,400 cheaper than Russ. Sure. I think Russ is a God, but in terms of a guy, you know, representing me, the common man, the bearded man, Ryan Fitzpatrick is my guy. Always root for all Ryan's 5,400. Let's go. 
Yeah, and he's and Fitzpatrick's been getting you rushing yards as well. Thirty-eight rushing yards on that uh, Thursday night game against the Jags. They're at home now, coming off long rest, kind of a and Seattle non-conference road spot all the way across the country after a big win against the Cowboys. Interesting spot for them. I'm definitely going to be playing a Fitzpatrick lineup. Definitely going to roll the dice with the Foles lineup at some point. <laughs> Jason, uh, what yeah. are you what are you doing for your quarterback this week? Uh, so I was looking at the totals uh, for this week coming up, and I one game that caught my eye was uh, Detroit, New, or- New Orleans um, against uh, New Orleans. So I have uh, Matt Stafford at fifty nine hundred. Um, Galladay's healthy. We got Marvin Jones Jr., Hawkinson, and also um, speaking of Hawkinson, New Orleans um, has just been horrible against the tight end. Um, so that gives a little sneak peek for later on, but, but Matt Stafford, uh, 5,900 like yeah. it. And, and honestly, Sean, uh, I flipped the coin before we went on the air and said, which line am I doing? And I, I said, you know what? Sean's going to make fun of me. If I pick, if I pull Stafford out after <laughs> the Lions going to win, but great matchup. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Interesting matchup for sure. New Orleans defense quietly been uh kind of, kind of bad Real after, trash. after that good yeah. start. Uh, against Tampa Bay, getting the uh, pick six as well. For me, this t- this took you know what as a professional handicapper. No, you sometimes didn't. you have to look in the mirror and no. say, you know what, I was wrong. Even though I'm an owner of Jared Goff sucks island, I'm <laughs> starting Jared Goff this week. Sixty seven hundred at home, coming off a loss. I heard Sean McVay uh, saying like he really liked the guys rallying, and now coming at. Home against his Giants defense, who just laid an egg against the against the Forty ers backups. Now they got to fly out to L.A. I, I think it's a great spot for Jared Goff. I never thought I would say this, but give me Jared Goff, sixty seven hundred. Kramer, who's your first running back? Real dick move. Uh, I, I actually looked at that too, and I, I thought I didn't want to pour any fuel on the fire. Uh, first running back, the the Vegas Raiders. They've not been doing much to slow down running attacks. And I, I really liked what I saw from Singletary. Obviously, monitor the reports with Zach Moss and everything. But I think coming into this year, whether it was because we liked Zach Moss and his performance in The Sims so much, or if we just forgot that Devin Singletary had a little bit of power in him because they had Frank Gore last year, Zach Moss this year, but Singletary looked fucking good. And he's only 5,900. And they're playing a Raiders team that. Sean, this this is not a Gruden still not into defense. Confirmed. No, not so, a defensive guy. And I don't know if you saw this quick sidebar about the Raiders. I saw a clip on the internet on Twitter of Bill Belichick and that defense not uh not caring who was running the route, but only defending the routes that were like 10 yards and less. There were about a compilation of about five plays where they let the deep guys go, single coverage, and just just double team the check down. So shout out to Bill Belichick, the ultimate Derek Carr diffuser. <laughs> Devin Singletary against this Raiders fifty nine hundred. Yeah, I like that option. Uh, Jason, uh, what are you doing for your first running back? Well, Kramer basically uh, said everything word for word that I was going to say, including monitoring uh, Zach Moss's health. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, Vegas is twenty eighth DVOA against the run. Um, Singletary also doesn't have any TDs on the year so far, I believe. Yep. Um, so I'm chasing that uh, regression, get him a touchdown or two. I love it. And did you hear that, Sean? Jason knows what's up. He's doing a little DVOA talk. Yeah, knows how to get <laughs> get right right to your heart with those numbers, Sean. <laughs> this is a uh, this is an interesting one for me because I was a big Kareem Hunt guy early on in the season. Thought he would have a role PPR, and he and he has to some degree. Of course, big time cunt guy over the years. <laughs> exactly, but I'm going uh, Nick Chubb at Dallas going against his Dallas defense. The the Cleveland Browns offense has kind of gotten right to whatever gr- degree they can get right. I'm sorry, come again. <laughs> and a big part of it is getting Nick Chubb involved. Kramer, yeah. you you said it. Maybe we as fantasy people overthought this a little bit. Uh, Nick Chubb coming off a huge game, but I don't see why he shouldn't have another huge game against this Dallas defense. That can just not. They can't stop anyone. They can't stop the pass. They certainly can't stop the run. And I think if you're Cleveland, if you're Stefanski, how do you keep that Dallas offense off the field? You pound the rock. Yep. You have two great running backs. Nick Chubb, seven thousand dollars. Book it. Mm, look at you spending some money. Kramer, what are you doing <laughs> for your second running back? Well, this guy is a guy who I. I I, I'm not a big fan of him. Never really been a big fan of him, 
but I'm a big fan of him this week because Pete Carroll likes to hand the ball off. Yeah. And unfortunately Chris Carson was, was taken down in a vicious dirty act by those filthy cowboy defenders <laughs> certainly was coached here. <laughs> Carlos side 5,300. There's not much to talk about here. Obviously I'm playing Fitzpatrick for the quarterback. So I guess you could call this a comeback. I definitely still want a piece of this Seattle offense going against Miami. And if, if this is a blowout, Sean, which it could be, guess what? Carlos Hyde is getting a lot of carries in this game. 5,300 Carlos Hyde. Great angle on that. Uh, Jason, what's your second running back? Uh, my second running back. I'm going to go with James Robinson for mm. 6,500. Um, if you look at what he did Thursday night, um, he helped me get on the show. First of all, yeah, there you <laughs> and, go. Uh, <laughs> and um, you know, he's getting the ball about 17 to 20 times a game. Um, and the Cincy Rundy, I mean, they've just been shitty basically all year. Uh, 150 to the Chargers, 215 to Cleveland, 175 to Philly. Um, so I could see him having a pretty good game here for 6,500. I'll be honest, John. I had him in there first, so I'm very locked <laughs> up with Jason. But I realized how cheap Carlos Hyde was. No, week, so I, I made the swap. I, I got to have some lineups with Hyde, and and uh, I'm like Jason. My second running back is James Robinson. He really. Nice. Uh, I mean, besides the uh, besides how well he's done running the ball, also getting involved in the passing game. Eleven mm-hmm. targets so far, ten catches for 129. And if you're Jacksonville, why not pound the rock against the Cincinnati run defense that's just been bad? I mean, Miles Sanders averaging like seven yards a carry. They didn't give it uh, to him enough. But 6,500, yeah, James Robinson. I what mean, a what a play here. We talked Chubb earlier. Chubb and Hunt had productive days against this. Defense. <laughs> no, there. I mean, yeah, I, I think load up on uh, against the Cincinnati defense for sure. Kramer, what are you doing? Kicking things off at the receiver spot. We, we were talking this earlier. It just seems like this is a week with a lot of really juicy matchups. I'm probably going to have the most lineups of the season this week. Not, mm. not counting the $5 Millie maker, but just so many players. I like, I couldn't get everyone in this lineup, but one guy I really like probably who you're going to stack Jason, maybe not, but uh, Kenny Galladay, <laughs> Great. Okay. He looked good. He's big physical. There's a reason you drafted him in the third round, maybe of your fantasy draft like myself, and then got your heart ripped out when it turned out <laughs> he's fucking hurt. 6,000 yep. good price, good matchup. This saints team, when they show, they showed a, a shot of Dennis Allen on the sideline of Sunday night football, Sean, I had this memory of remember when Dennis Allen had the worst defense in the league, like two years in a row. And then there was that swing back year. They got all the rookies. They had a really good year and he's still the coordinator. Yeah. It got him all this. And now they're looking like back to trash. Drew Brees isn't the same guy. Taysom Hill is losing games. Cam Jordan, not make it an impact. Perhaps like uh, this, ha- a little, th- this could be a bit of karma for some of their off season transgressions, mm. Sean. Kenny Galladay, 6,000. Great matchup. My lions are mm-hmm. storming back to the playoffs <laughs> as they take on the saints. This Look, week. looks healthy too. Uh, Jason, what are you doing for your first receiver? So I went opposite Kramer here. Um, I was going to go Galladay, but I ended up going with Marvin Jones jr. For 4,900. Mm, um, yeah. I think with Galladay back that, you know, more coverage is going to shift over towards, towards Galladay and open up some stuff for Marvin Jones. And, oh. um, like I said, I think Detroit's going to be playing from behind most of the game, and Stafford's going to be throwing. So solid angle, yeah. For well, sure. you know, <laughs> Patricia hasn't quite figured defense out yet. Uh, I know he's yeah. it's been it's, he's been doing it. He's kind of new at it, but he he'll get there. But yeah, I mean, I think I think you could do the worst than get some Lions in your lineup this week, Sean. For my stack, give me Cooper Cup, sixty seven hundred again at home. Not with, Robert Woods, huh? Nah, I mean, you could go Cup or Woods. I don't know. Make the case for Woods over Cup, Ryan. You know, you know this. Uh, you know this Giants defense. I'm going Cup. Go for it. But uh, you could make a case for Robert Woods, and and maybe I do a double stack in another lineup, uh, and then run it back with Slayton. But uh, yeah, for this one, I'm going Cooper Cup, 6,700 bucks at home. He's had 21 targets so far, 18 catches. Uh, got a touchdown last week against Buffalo. I think he's involved early and often against this Giants defense. Who's your second receiver? Sean, would you mind cueing the boat trip music? <laughs> Odell Beckham. Has he played well in Big Day Big D before, Sean? Yes, yes. For, right? you, one might argue his entire career is based on a moment <laughs> that happened in Big D. Good matchup. You highlighted the reason why you want to get some Browns in your lineup this week. This Dallas defense is trash. Specifically, the secondary is trash. Uh, this has to be a chalky play with the way that Lockett and DK Metcalf just went off. But 
Beckham hasn't had a massively explosive game in a while. Now that we, he's come out and explained to the world that he likes shit and he plays for the Browns. <laughs> I don't I think expect, he, I don't think he had made that. Announcement. I, expe- <laughs> I expect, <laughs> I expect this to be an explosive spot for him down in big D, which by the way, did you hear Jerry Jones talking shit on? Oh, Dak? that was great. Yeah, oh. we could do a whole podcast. Trouble in paradise. That, Odell Beckham, fifty eight hundred. Breaking that down. Receiver two, Jason. What do we got? All right, for my second receiver, um, Mike Evans, sixty four hundred. Yes, um, he's going to benefit. Godwin's most likely going to be out this week, if not more. Um, I didn't hear about the MRI results yet, um, but he has four touchdowns already. Uh, when Godwin was out in week two, he had ten targets, and Tom Brady's going to get him the ball. I mean, and what you see, the the important thing is you saw the targets around the red zone. I think at some point in that game, he had two catches for two touchdowns. Yeah. And interesting to know that's all he had. Yeah. At the final line. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Just two catches, two touchdowns. Interesting note too. Scotty Miller, who seems to be a safety blanket. He's kind of banged up as well. So if Scotty Miller's out, it really is going to help. Well, we do have as well. We do have late breaking news on that. He was seen. uh, He was spotted at in Tom Brady's bedroom getting some TB12 (laughs) treatment. So (laughs) little mouth to mouth. uh, Make sure breathe some life back into Scotty Miller. (laughs) Uh, Sean. Yes. Mm. What am I doing here? Uh, For my second receiver. I played him in some lineups last week. I forget if I, I think I gave him out on the show, but uh, especially when Nick Foles came into the game, Allen <laughs> Robinson. Oh my now God. I know what you're saying. Like, Oh, it's crazy to play him again, but he had 13 targets for 31.3 uh, fantasy points. I'm telling you, this is exactly the type of receiver Foles loves. He's able to throw the jump ball to him. They, I mean, the way when Allen Robinson had that pass and he just th- chucked the defender ran into the end zone, like the effort you saw out of Allen Robinson. Um, there's clearly an already a connection there with Foles, sixty seven hundred dollars against this Colts defense, which don't don't let their performance against the Jets fool you. Like this Colts defense has had some holes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Gardner Minshew had a really big game against them. They've had some moments where they don't look amazing. You know, granted they've played the Jets and the Vikings back to back, so their defense has looked a lot better than they probably are. And now coming in as a road favorite to Chicago, Allen Robinson, sixty seven hundred. Who's your third receiver, Kramer? Yeah, you you nailed it though. Nick Foles locks on targets, and I would say if you can, if you know who the tight end in Chicago is going to be, uh, for Nick Foles, the guy he has chemistry with, that's another guy you might be able to look in a stab. Uh, I had a stack Fitzpatrick, Sean, Devontae Parker. Let's go, fifty seven hundred, great yep. matchup. Uh, I, I've been a fanboy of Devontae Parker since he came out of college for some reason. And uh, post Adam Gase, I mean, what more need is to say? Well, also in games where they t- fall behind, Parker has had some massive efforts with Fitzpatrick because it seems like he thrives on Fitzpatrick's ability to give zero fucks about what the score is in the game. <laughs> so, Devontae Parker, fifty-seven hundred. What are you doing here for your third receiver, Jason? All right. So for my third receiver, I went pretty cheap. Um, you'll see why in a little bit, but I went with Chase Claypool for four thousand. Uh, he, right now he leads the NFL in yards per reception at 25.2, 6'4, 238, 4, 4 speed. He's a big guy. And I think he's going to be a good pivot this week from Andy Isabella and T Higgins. Um, I mean, they both scored two touchdowns last week. So I, I yeah. think it's a little bit of a long shot, but I, I think if he hits, he, he could hit big. Well, and, and especially going up against this Tennessee defense, of course, there's some COVID news early, but uh, according mm-hmm. to Schefter, at, I mean, they they placed three guys on the COVID list. No one, none of them seemed like they would have a huge impact. And according to the NFL, they're just plugging away, uh, going to do the game as normal. So, is I, that is that confirmed? What? Like we we definitely believe. No, no. Schefter said at this moment they're going to try and do the game as planned. Okay. There are contingencies depending if between now and and when the game, if more people test positive, but. They're not going to be in their facility. It's going to mess up their practice schedule. And again, Titans, that defense has just kind of not looked good. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen went off for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Good, good spot for this Pittsburgh offense, uh, which has looked looked strong throughout the season. This guy, and I don't how is this guy not more money right now? I, I just can't like I don't know why he's not more expensive. I feel like I'm I'm the only guy on the Keenan Allen train right now. He had 19 targets last game. The game before he had 10. So in the two games with Herbert as the starting quarterback, 29 targets. He's catching a bunch of them. 6,500. 
they're going to Florida. So you have to play in that Florida heat, but uh, Tampa Bay's defense again, I, I think there are opportunities against this defense. Yeah. And especially if Tampa Bay gets out early, um, you know, Chargers playing from behind, whatever it is, Keenan Allen is going to be involved early and often 6,500. And this guy has like has 15 target potential at 6,500 huge value for me. Keenan Allen for the chargers Kramer tight end. So I've actually, and you, I, I, I did a rare thing. I stacked three different teams this week. So I have nice. Patrick and, and Parker on the dolphins. Uh, I also have Galladay and Hawkinson. Mm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning into this saints are trash theory of mine, which we kind of started in the off season. And I think the be, the, the fact that they have a, such a stacked roster that's now being chipped away with injury 26th against the tight end DVOA. There's opportunity here, and we we saw what did we see last week, Sean? We kept seeing another tight end flash. This is going to be a week where we're going to see a big effort from Hawkinson. Uh, I I even think I'll go this far. You could go with you could go Marvin Jones, Galladay, and Hawkinson. I think the ball is going to be Ooh. flying. Stafford's going to have a massive game. Wow, Hawkinson forty eight hundred like for my Lions. All right, yep. what are you uh what are you doing at a uh, tight end, Jason? Yeah, are you I, going Hawk as well here? I I am yes. Um, just based on pretty much everything Kramer said, that uh, New Orleans sucks against the tight end this year. Yeah, I mean, OJ Howard had a great game. Darren Waller went off, and Green Bay's tight ends uh, combined for over 100 yards and two touchdowns. Um, and like you say, should be thrown a lot. So I like Hawkinson as well, 4800. And Green Bay never goes to the tight end like that. OJ no. Howard has literally been hanging out on the side of a milk carton for the past two <laughs> seasons. He showed yeah. up. So love the angle. Sean, who are you taking for your tight end? You know, I, I kind of went bigger at receiver and running back had to go cheap tight end. So a small tight end this week. Yeah, nice exactly. Tight one. Nice little tight, <laughs> tight end. 3000 bucks oh. at home against Arizona Cardinals who didn't look amazing against Jesse James. They let up a touchdown for the lions. <laughs> Hawk got a couple grabs. Yeah. Ian Thomas, who who's had a pretty quiet season. He's been missing. He's, he's just gone MIA. This is a, this is my dart throw of the week, but I think Ian Thomas shows up on Sunday at home against this Cardinals defense. I thought you were going to say sample after kind of a dud week coming back with a great matchup against Jacksonville. That's not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad zig. Anyway, as my well. my flex, Sean. Yes. What better guy to put in this the, the flex here? This is to complete my final stack. I, I, again, I brought you Fitzpatrick Parker on the Dolphins. I brought you Galladay Hawkinson, and now I'm going to bring you the Carlos Hyde, DK Metcalf. Ooh, big dude flexing in the flex spot, 6800. You know what? I believe that he's going to be very embarrassed about that uh, incident around the end zone. Last oh week. yeah, chip and, on his shoulder. And uh, when I see a, a guy do that, I'm looking to buy him next week. They have a. I don't know where the coverage is going to go for this Dolphins team, but I have to imagine that Howard is going to be on Lockett. I, I just think that's the way you play this. I, I just you're going to lose one of your best cover guys if you put him on Metcalf. Metcalf's going to be down the field, and it's Russ. He's cooking. Let's go, 6800. Let Russ cook. All right. Jason flex spot. What are we doing? Well, I'm sticking to the Detroit new Orleans game and I'm going to roll with Alvin Kamara. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, snuck yeah. him in the back door. Big, yep. big play in the flex <laughs> spot. Nice. Yep. <laughs> um, Detroit sucks against the run. They're giving up like 170 some yard yards on the ground a game. And um, drew bees likes to check down. He, he, doesn't seem to know how to throw deep anymore. So, um, I don't know if it's just that he's get, getting old or what, but yeah, no, clearly arm I strength saw, an issue there. I, I saw a stat. If you, if you eliminated Alvin Kamara's rushing stats, he would be the number four wide receiver in fantasy football. <laughs> That's insane. That's crazy. I mean, I, I, I would just keep an eye to see if Michael Thomas plays. If he does play, is he a hundred percent? I, I don't see how Kamara is not involved a bunch in that game mm -hmm. as well. For me, this is a guy I kind of threw out early on, season long as a deep best ball play. But uh, Antonio Gibson, the uh, Washington football team at home against the Ravens, Ravens short week. And you saw the way to attack the Ravens, the screen game. Chiefs use the yep. screen game early and often. Jesus. Haskins clearly <laughs> struggling with his turnovers. I think Ron Rivera is going to go, you know what? We got a running back here, Antonio Gibson. 
if coming off of, you know, averaging 5.5 uh, yards per carry. And I don't think they've really unlocked him in the passing no. game. Like they want to still waiting to see it, you know? And I, I think this could be the game against the Ravens 4,500. Give me Antonio Gibson Kramer. Close things out. What do you got for your defense? I have, I, I, I can play whatever defense I want. Wow. I have a lot of money left over this week because you know, of course I won the big boy. Yes. And as I look through the lineup, Pittsburgh's a fun defense, right? But they're they're on the road. Yeah, maybe I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Rams. Oh wow, right. 3900 going against the fucking turnover machine <laughs> and Daniel Jones. I don't know what <laughs> Dave Gettleman saw in this asshole. I mean, Aaron Donald versus that offensive line. That's the move. And, yeah. and I think with with the, you know, let's just say I'm an optimistic Giants fan, which Sean can attest to this. I I don't even know how much of the second half I paid attention to. <laughs> but 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 there there's there comes a point where you have to have he has a level of Daniel Jones, this is, has a level of awareness which when when put into good surroundings is the kind of thing you say, wow, it's early Carson Wentz. That guy, he doesn't he doesn't feel the pressure. He just makes plays, right? It's Russell Wilson. But when in bad, when in a, when in a bad environment, when when guys are reaching out the the broke down car window with the crack pipe, he's in trouble <laughs> because his level of awareness of what the fuck is happening around him is on a fifth grade level, and maybe that's generous. <laughs> he has no cl- so when Aaron Don like I worry. That Colt McCoy is going to be getting some snaps in this game. Wow, is that the you Giants can't backup? not be aware? Yes, you can't <laughs> not be aware. When did you see what Aaron Donald did to Zeke Elliott Week One? Yeah, he took a two hundred, mm-hmm. probably closer to two sixty now with with the uh, COVID off season and all the uh, the drugs he's been consuming. But he took a two hundred and sixty pound Zeke Elliott and he threw him to the side like he was a fucking troll doll. That's I all mean, I have to say about that. Rams defense, baby. Even, Let's go. Even, <laughs> even the Bills offensive line, which is a good offensive line, he just he wrecks some shop in there. All right, close. that's not a good matchup, Jason. What are you what are you doing oh, for your? Oh, oh, sorry, last point I have here: the Giants also <laughs> don't have a center, so worth noting. Throw that out there. Feels like most that could, important spot on the line. <laughs> I think so. I think, I didn't know you didn't tell me he was an NFL uh, coaching expert as well. John. Anyway, Jason's Jason, what got, do you got it all. No, I I played center for ten years. That's how I. Oh, really? Oh, that's how. It, oh, yeah. So you available? The Giants guy. <laughs> Giants need a guy. I, I don't know. I'm I'm pushing forty, so I don't know about that. <laughs> Sorry, me too. I can still be a kicker. Who you got for defense? All right. <laughs> All right. For defense, um, I had about thirty two hundred left. I went with the Chicago Bears at home versus the Colts. Ooh, like it. And um, they're home. It's outside. It's not in the dome. The Colts receivers, I, I know they have T.Y. Hilton. Everyone else seems to be injured. Um, Pittman got hurt this week, and I uh, can't think of the other guy's name. But yeah, they're they're all banged up, and the Bears are going to be fired up because they got Nick Foles. I think they're going to come ready to play. Yeah, and this and this, you know, this honeymoon marriage of like Phil Rivers is going to be with this great offensive line. He's going to be lighting up the scoreboard. Kind of not. There yet again. I, you want I, a hot take? What's that? Take the sh- take the Bears to win the division right now. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Well, yeah, that that's interesting because they. I mean, hmm. yeah, Packers looking good as well. Yeah. All right, for my defense again, this is just fading the Cowboys. Give me the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> it's Go. a good. It's a. They have a good defense. Yeah, they've got their cornerbacks healthy. Um, they also have a good defense. I don't know why I said it like that. Yeah, you, it their sounded defense like, can put up a good defense. Yeah, and I think I think people are like come uh, something's going to be going wonky in that Cowboys locker room where they keep putting up points, not getting anything done. Jerry Jones just said Tony Romo is better than Dak Prescott. That, that's yeah. a high insult. I mean, I guess maybe the younger crowd doesn't remember, but Tony Romo is known for being a choke artist. Yeah. Who didn't actually make a play when it came down <laughs> to it. And what Jerry Jones said is that Tony would have made that play. But as we learned repeatedly, Tony never made that play. So I think Jerry's getting a little old. I think they're they're playing with fire, dude. I mean, My, if you're Miles if you're Garrett. a not Cowboys fan, are you happy to see Dak leave the division? 
because um, they're fucking around with this, and then they go reset and go back and have to. Figure yeah, out that'll be. I, I, yeah, Dak's a good quarterback. Dak is an upgrade from Tony Romo. I would love to see them run him out of town. That would be pretty awesome. I would just love to see any sort of drama down in Dallas. Miles Garrett coming off back to back weeks with a forced fumble. I think he 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 gets involved, and that yeah. Cowboys offensive line quietly dealing with a lot of offensive line injuries as well. As, I mean, it didn't show against Seattle because Seattle's defense is so bad. But I think against the decent defense which the Browns have, they're getting a little confidence. Look out for the Browns. This week and uh, the Browns defense, especially twenty three hundred bucks. Jason, appreciate you calling in. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Continue Thank you dom- very much. Continue dominating the contest. Uh, give Jason a follow on Twitter at J Swab fifty four S W O B fifty four. Jason, once again, appreciate it, man. Good luck this week. Yeah. Thank you, and I hope to hope to make it on again. That'd be awesome. I want to give a shout out to BetQL, baby. Always using their data for college football. MLB playoffs are going on. Of course, the National Football League. So much to bet on, so much to gamble on. Bet smarter, not harder. BetQL helps you do that. Only app you'll need to make smart bets this season. They got that best bets algorithm, makes it very easy. Skins all the data points, trends you need to know. Gives you a uh, little star rating system, and then sharp data. Where are the pros at? Where are the Joes at? Where? What public money do you want to fade? Make sure you download BetQL, and uh, depending on your state, they got some exclusive offers for you as well. Just download that in the App Store, Google Play Store. Check it out, BetQL. And if you want the premium stuff, which again we use here on the podcast. Go to betql.co, enter code SGP20. Betql.co, promo code SGP20 for 20% off your first subscription. Joining us on the line, horse racing expert, horse racing insider for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, Malcolm Bamford. Malcolm, how how are uh, things over in England right now? Well, boys, good evening. I feel like I'm in a safe space now talking to you two. Um, <laughs> My team, my Premier League team, Newcastle, are so bad at the minute. The last, I don't know if you know, the last two weeks in the Premier League have been record breaking weeks. Uh, there's been the most goals in history scored over the two weeks. In that two week period, my team have not had a single shot on target. <laughs> so I thought, I mean, they're up, they're completely and utterly in timeout. And then Sunday night came around and I put the red zone on. And I watched the Giants and I watched the Eagles be just as bad as my team. Yeah, so dude, this, we're with you, bro. <laughs> we're we're two, here. If there's two people I can talk to uh, <laughs> and feel like I'm in a safe environment, and then it's you two. So I'm 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 happy to do this. Well, that is probably a similar analogy because we we talked earlier in the podcast about record scoring, record fantasy points, <laughs> and our two teams figuring out uh, how to mess that up. I know you're also uh, right before we started. You said you have a couple of baseball bets you're sweating out as well. Well, yeah, just little fun ones. Be- before the season started, I read an article on with a shortened season, the 60 game season, that the odds of reaching the playoffs changed wildly. And I think lazily, a couple of the British bookmakers never really bothered to adjust. They can't, I don't think they take much action on the MLB. So I looked at the prices and I found a couple of really silly ones. So I just spread, I spread 20 pounds around some of the big prices, but I've sneaked two through. I've got the Blue Jays, it's 80 to 1. They start against the Yankees tonight, but I've got Miami at five hundred to one. Oh, oh man! Um, they take yeah, they take they they play the Cubs starting tomorrow, and the Cubs haven't been very good. No, um, they've got a good record, but the the old metrics point to them being a bit lucky. So uh, it's nothing life changing, but maybe if they get through to the next round, then I'll uh, I might have a look at a hedge. But yeah, it's been a little bit of fun. That, that's a serious well, five hundred to one. That's fun. Yeah, twenty three pounds. I mean. <laughs> well, it'll do. Oh, that'll that'll be that'll be a fun sweat. But well, uh, be- better than putting all the money on that goddamn loser horse last last. Oh go yeah. By. Oh my. Coming God. off the Kentucky Derby, our uh, our boy the favorite didn't didn't uh, come through. But doesn't matter. We're back here talking Preakness, getting ready. I'm still sore from that, Sean. Doing a little doing a little sweat here on the Preakness. Um, yeah. So tell us about uh Pimlico. And, and what kind of no party there this year? No partying, and that's a it's a legendary party normally at the Preakness. What kind of uh, what can we expect from the track? What kind of horses does it favor normally? Pimlico is just a big fair track. 
Uh, it's at Maryland, I think, isn't it? They, they see the Maryland or oh, Maryland. I know Sea Biscuit ran its famous match race against War Admiral. That was at Pimlico, and the Pimlico was special. I know that. So this is the 145th running of the Preakness. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a big fair track. It's not a big field, so we shouldn't expect many hard luck stories. They'll all have a chance. Uh, and it, it, we talked on the Derby preview about it was 18 runners, 19 runners, something like that. So it tends to be a little bit rough uh, and you need a little bit of luck in running. Well, that's not going to be the case. This is similar similar to the Belmont again. Um, there'll be two or three at the front. There'll be two or three in the middle. There'll be two or three you want to be at the back. So everyone should be able to run his race and uh, it should be a fair test, I think. Well, and, and uh, Sean, for the, for those who are, aren't uh, horse betting experts like myself, <laughs> uh, the Preakness is all. If I'm not mistaken, is the Preakness not the the chalkiest of the events typically? Uh, I don't. don't we talked the the Derby had quite a good run on favorites last time, and obviously, normally this is the this is in the middle. Uh, this is in the middle of the. If the the runner triple crown races were all sort of out of sequence, but hundred percent honest with you, I don't know what the stats are with regard to favourites and uh, whether it is the chalkiest or not. Ryan, while I was doing prep, aka oh. reading uh, Malcolm's article <laughs> on our on our website, <laughs> doing my doing my deep dive of reading uh, Malcolm's ideas and trying to pitch them back to him in a creative way, I always <laughs> love these these uh, phrases he comes up with. That uh, maybe it's a language thing mixed with like the horse racing vernacular that I haven't heard of that I want to start using and using properly. New York traffic, who is a horse that I liked, you said New York traffic ran like a hairy goat in the Derby. Oh. What is that? Is that a compliment? <laughs> is that an insult? In, somewhere in between? What does that mean? Do you think it's a compliment, Sean? If you had to guess, <laughs> <laughs> I would say I would say no, but I, I don't know. Hairy goat. It sounds kind of cool. It, you know, it's the sort of thing a man would tell you in a pub. So if you go, if you've been to the football and you go back to the pub and you say, "Oh, John, did you see the race this afternoon? How did New York traffic run?" and he'd say, "Oh man, it ran like a hairy goat. It just it ran badly." <laughs> yeah. It means, but, yeah, I I was assuming that was badly because you said he ran <laughs> like a hairy goat at the Derby. So Carson Wentz is oh. playing like a hairy goat. Well, I mean, Wentz is like a very hairy goat. Well, ah. by that, by that, if we're doing horse racing analogies, then Daniel Jones is a a horse that has to be put down. It's send so, send him to the glue factory. Strangely, Carson Wentz has more hair. If we're ma- using the goat <laughs> analogy, strange. Anyway, so a couple a couple of the uh, let's talk horses you like here. Who who is jumping out at you? I know I know usually you know you got some of the favorites in here, but right now who who do you, who are you liking? Well, if we, if we start at the top with authentic, obviously lowered the colours of Tis the Law in the Kentucky Derby, and that was a perfectly fair race. It, when they came around that top turn, it looked like Tis the Law was coming to win the race. Um, they, they both came away from the field, which is normally a good sign. They had the field five, six, seven lengths in behind, and Tis the Law looked like it was going to come and win the race. And we had a little bit of doubt about Authentic's um, stamina. As it happened, Authentic put its head down, uh, gritted its teeth, and absolutely gutted it out. So there was no excuses. Um, there's nothing, everything sort of points towards Authentic. There was that There was that run. The fact it didn't run in the Belmont previously means it shouldn't be, it, 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 it should be relatively fresh. Often when you get to this stage of the Triple Crown, the horses have been going uh, since the spring, well, they haven't. And, and Authentic didn't run in the Belmont, so it should be relatively fresh. Um, you've got the Bob Baffert factor. Baffert's um, he's five for five when he's gone for the Kentucky Derby uh, and Preakness Double, which is an incredible record. That's insane. Uh, he's been looking for his seventh winner. Yeah, that's a great record, isn't it? That, well, I saw that start yesterday. That was a real eye opener. Um, and Authentic won that race. That was the best uh, Derby time since 2001. So there's not much. I mean, I'm, I'm painting this picture for it. Then actually, I'm going to pick against it. But the, <laughs> it will be it will be there or thereabouts because there's nothing. The jockey John Velasquez has seen and done it all before. There's nothing can put you off this horse. What about uh? I know Art Collector. Pretty good odds on Art Collector. What's what's the uh, breakdown on Art Collector? Well, this is the one. This is the one we've put on top in the article. Uh, almost 
for the value, it's five to two currently where authentic is it's five to four uh, in this country. There's a little bit of nine to five, maybe over in the States. I'd look at um, my book earlier on. There's a bit of nine to five, but art collector is a bit of a bigger price. And in the two previous chats that we've had, we've talked about unexposed horses um, and art collector fits into that category. Um, as a three-year-old, it, the horse moved to Tommy Drury Jr., uh, a new trainer as a three-year-old. And since he joined Tommy, he's gone four for four. Um, it's a, it, He's got a couple of different ways of running. The horse can go to the front. The horse can stalk the pace. He beat the filly. There's a filly in the race, Swiss Skydiver. He was actually third favourite. Um, Art Collector beat Swiss Skydiver quite comprehensively in the bluegrass stakes. Uh, it was due to run in the derby, had a little foot issue, so they've scratched it. But Art Collector's the one that just has the potential maybe to, to improve and get past authentic. So yeah, I do like Art Collector. What about uh, some of these longer shots? I know New York traffic. Well, Sean, the only nugget I have yes. is what about the one horse that's running all three races like a man? What about the one horse that's actually going to compete in the full effect of the triple crown. And that's max player. I know, I know, I know a guy you've fancied in the past been a bit of favorite so far since we've had you on what's the, what's the lowdown on max player for the Preakness. Just briefly back to art collector. Um, he has in the past had a PED ban before. So I thought <laughs> with a bit of a, a, a bit of a podcast um, relevance, he's been on the nose. We as the horse. So <laughs> I thought that that might, uh, that might be something that would appeal to you, but match play has been, we picked it for the Belmont and he just keeps running really well. That you, if you like him, you like him. There's no reason not to pick him. He always runs his race. He's a closer. And with closers, you always have to, a, you have to have that little bit of luck. They need, they need the traffic free run. And in the, um, in the Kentucky Derby, I watched it back about seven times this week. And wow. That it just, well, just real that third, just Sorry, real go. quick. I, I appreciate game, I like the, the dedication film, yeah. breaking down the game film. Do they have an all 22 <laughs> for horse racing, like a different angle that the coaches only can look at. They have to pay extra for. They kept doing the drone angle on, I don't know what was it CBS, whoever was carrying it. And nice. They kept doing the overhead and that was annoying me. I wasn't, cause yeah. you can't tell who's who yeah, you can see the top of their heads. <laughs> yeah. You need to see the numbers. Yeah, five of them in red hats and five of them in blue hats, like from <laughs> from from over the top. It's no good. Yeah, and they they like that angle a lot. Um, but coming around that third bend, Max player, he has to come with a the run. They wind it up uh, and then try to shoot it out of a cannon down the straight. They just as he was coming to the top of his wind up, he seemed he just ran into a little bit of traffic and then got out and finished really strongly. So he's finished third in the Belmont. He's finished fifth in the Derby. He's done nothing wrong. I think this time, if they can get him maybe a little bit closer to the pace, because he sits a long way off. He sits 20, 25 lengths off. And this is something you never see this in UK race. And it fascinates me how they can park them so far back. And then they come with an absolute rattle off that home turn. We never see that. You might see one eight or nine lengths back in this country, but you never see one parked so far away from the pace. Um, if they can get this a little bit closer to the front, if it can avoid trouble, it will run its race. I mean, the horse has proved to be bomb proof. Like and I just say getting to this time of year, they're going to get a little bit stronger. I think he's, he's, he's primed for prime for a big race. He's been admirable this year. Uh, as Ryan says, he's, he's turned up to all three of the triple crown races. Yeah. And I've got max player in my, uh, I've, in my one, two, three, four, I had him finish second to um to Art Collector. So yeah, I think he will run a race. We'd stick with him. Kramer. And another fun way yes. you can play him is uh, a little later in the week, I'm sure my bookie will come up with a lot of the matchup props. And so I would look to play Max Player versus some of the horses in that same odds range, maybe New York traffic, maybe Mr. Big News, where you can get a little bit better odds and not have to have him. Also fun to throw in the, there as Malcolm did with his uh, your try box. Of course, everyone plays a couple superfectas. Get yeah, him in there. exactly. Kramer, what are you looking? What are you looking as far as your picks here for the Preakness? You got it. You got a try box. You want to throw well, out? It to sounds the like Malcolm just told me what it is. Yes. we have the guy that beat the greatest horse ever in <laughs> in authentic. We have a guy, a horse who apparently uh, big into the nose beers. We like that on the sports <laughs> gambling podcast. An art collector, and then my 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 take here was just Max Player. Max Player seems like a fun 
horse. I love the fact that he's actually competing in all three events. Not one of these soft horses scratching like art collector. <laughs> I have my toe hurts. I don't want to run in the race. Uh, yeah. And, th- and then my other, my other words of wisdom here was going to be ma- really, I'm just going to take max player and some heads up matchups. That's what I'm going to do. I-, I lost a lot of money on tis the law and I'm still, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not happy about the state of horse racing. And uh, my other take is I, I don't really like any of the long shots at all. Yeah. It seemed like uh, we'll get to that in a second, but for my try box, I, I can't get away from New York traffic. So throw okay. me, throw me New York traffic, authentic. And of course our boy max player. And then should we have a little fun wager? A little, maybe a sim unit, Sean on uh traffic max player versus, versus traffic. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be rooting for max player as well, but okay. yeah, I, I like, I like New York traffic to win outright as well, 15 to one. So that's my try box. I'm also obviously going to be taking Malcolm's picks here and it looks like Malcolm uh, break this down. <laughs> you got art collector, max player, authentic. And then the fourth uh, horse we haven't talked about excessive coming in fourth. Oh, uh, just, yeah. A little recap of why you think that's uh, they're going to shake out in that order. Yeah. Accession was it again. We were looking for the, the angle of a, Unexposed runner. He ran a really good race. There's a good horse called Nadal, um, who's unbeaten. Uh, and Accession ran it really close. He gave it a right scare uh, in the Rebel Stakes last time. The only thing with that is, I think that the race was ran to suit Accession. They went off really hard in front. Um, Nadal, remarkably big in the horse he is, managed to keep going from the front. Everything else fell in a hole, and Accession came out the pack. Uh, and wasn't beaten very far. That was on a wet track. Now, I don't know what the weather forecast is. If you've got a little bit of rain in the air, um, because as Ryan just alluded to, some of these horses can be a little bit, uh, a little bit prissy. They don't like it when they go and get (laughs) some accession's been proven uh, in the slop. So if there's a little bit of rain around, or if they go hard up front, um, then accession could be staying on uh, at the end. I like Ryan's take of, Max player against some of the field because what you're doing there, New York traffic, for example, sat up with the pace at the Kentucky Derby. So for the majority of the race, it was Tis the Law, Authentic was up there, and New York traffic tried to go with them. Now, if New York traffic sits in behind, he'll possibly stay ahead of Max player. But if he goes with the front and tries to win the race, that's when a furlong out, a furlong and a half out. He's going to stop his run will come to an end, which is what happened in the derby. And Max Fair will pick them off. So I think it's a it's a nice angle that you've. I don't know if you've stumbled across it accidentally. Right <laughs> Absolutely or what. no, one hundred percent. This forecast it's not a bad angle. The forecast for Saturday, Sean. Yeah, sunny. Okay, ah, but there is rain okay. on Friday. Mm. So, so maybe maybe it ends up still being a little sloppy, or maybe that rain gets there a little later. Right now they have a uh, scheduled uh, scattered showers throughout the day on Friday. So who knows? You know, you never know. Now, Malcolm, you're saying Oops. kind of for this race, stay away from the long shots. Don't like any of the crazy, the 30 to one and higher guys or horses in this case. Well, there's, only a, there's only a couple in Sean. If you haven't had a look at after your um, evangelical swamp meat Jesus run <laughs> last week, <laughs> If you haven't picked Jesus team, I mean, if the Eagles aren't Jesus team this week, then I don't know what is, I thought that one would have absolutely jumped off the page at you. We've got nose beers and then we've got one further down with Jesus team. If you don't, uh, maybe I will, maybe I will throw a together. couple, uh, a well, couple of shekels on Jesus. I team. did get a chuckle chuckle when I saw live your beast life, just thinking of college <laughs> drinking beast light, which the fine, the finest of American beers. So, so Malcolm, you laid out your one, two, three, four. How are you going to? Are you going to throw these in a box? Are are you going to play them individually to win, to place, to show any sort of other crazy combination prop bet? Uh, what what else do you got as far as stuff you're probably going to get down on here? First, I'll back. We've had this discussion before about how I would do it compared to how all of your country would do it, and I would back authentic to win. I would back max player each way, yeah. which would be win, place, and show. I think for you. Yep. Uh, and then I would box up the four of them. So uh, did I say authentic? Sorry, I meant art collector. I'd back art collector to win. I'd back max player each way. And then I would box up the four um, just in all all orders. One, two, three, four. What's that? So sort of six and 16 bets or something. 16 $1 bets would give you a nice little boxed quad. Yeah. For, for, well, are you bo- you're boxing the super factor? Are you boxing the try? The, the four. Uh, I'll be boxing. 
I'd probably box the four, I think. So that's going to be 24, 24 bets. 20, yeah, there you go then. So yeah, little uh, two or three units on Art Collector, a unit and a half each way on Max Player, and then maybe half a unit yes. on the quad. <laughs> All well, right, I'm getting down on the super box. Well, this uh, this sounds fun. Just plenty of more stuff to gamble on. Yeah, no, I'm not busy on Saturday. Or <laughs> appreciate uh, appreciate calling in. Keep up the good work. Uh, all and uh, yeah. doing a bunch of articles for the site as well. Make sure you follow Malcolm on Twitter, Mal underscore B underscore Sports. Malcolm, appreciate you calling in, and uh, best of luck this weekend. Yes, looking forward to it, boys. We'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Oh yeah, talking ace per head, baby. Can you imagine if you started your own sports book right now, you could be taking MLB playoff action, college football action. I mean, people are betting on the goddamn presidential debates. That's weird. NFL, of course. And we just talked to uh, our boy Malcolm Preakness. I mean, Horses, they really baby. they have it all. Perfect time to start your own sports book. And if you're doing it, you got to go to acefairhead.com slash S G P acefairhead.com slash S G P use that sign up link, get six weeks free. That's right. Six weeks of their award-winning sports book software, completely free, great customer service, top notch organization. Um, again, don't know why you'd want to use any other sports book software, acefairhead.com slash S G P turnkey. Get set up, ready to go in just minutes. Acepro.com slash S G P. Joining us on the line, host of the NBA gambling podcast, Ryan Rich Fat Baby McKee. Happy uh, Yo. Happy NBA Finals, Rich Fat Baby. Thank you. At first I thought you were gonna say happy endings for some reason, but yes, <laughs> uh happy NBA finals. I was gonna say, Sean really emphasized the ho and host when bringing <laughs> yeah. you on. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, he's interesting uh, way to uh, alliterate, I guess. Interesting, yes, exactly. I like to mix it up, keep mm, keep people the on their toes. He's the professional. You know, sometimes uh, I go a little uh, <laughs> all over the place with my pronunciation, but uh, man, awesome, awesome talking hoops, NBA finals. Admittedly, I've been a little in and out of the NBA playoffs, <laughs> overwhelmed with uh, the NFL. But uh, I mean, I, I just listened to the pod you and uh, Zach dropped. I, I, you know, got a nice couple little nuggets here. But I, I mean, let's just start with the matchup overall. I, I think one cool part about the the bubble is that we saw a a five seed make it to the NBA Finals. Don't know if we would have seen that otherwise. Miami Heat. The first fifth uh, seed to make it to the NBA Finals, so Ever. that's pretty awesome, right? That is cool. That is cool. I'm not sure if we would have got that from the bubble either, but I do think the Bucks were kind of frauds when it came to the playoffs. Yeah. So um, who's to say? It, it was just an interesting year all around. I like that. So you're saying that the bubble is their scapegoat. That even with the home court, they would have been found out to be fraudulent. I think so. Oh. Yeah, I I think so as well. I mean, I I think they wouldn't have gotten. Uh, they ended up getting swept, like right? Early Toronto, maybe vibes. They didn't get swept, but they they, they, they only won one. one. Yeah, they won one. Yeah. So I, maybe they would have won a couple more games, but um, I mean, were you rooting for in the Eastern Conference? Gambling aside, would you have rather seen the the Celtics come in uh, to the Lakers, or were you rooting for the Heat uh, to make it here? I'm 100 percent on board with the Heat. I have been since before the bubble. Uh, I just love this team. I mean, Butler is a bulldog, and they have this nastiness to them that you just don't see with a lot of teams these days. Uh, they play with an edge. Bam Adebayo is amazing. Tyler Hero has oh, just so been fun. my favorite part of 2020 <laughs> so far, um, and that's including every minute with my wife. Uh, no, so, <laughs> um, but it's uh, no, I, don't, I I I love this team. I bet them to um, win. You know, I had put. 50 bucks on them to win the Eastern conference finals. And I'm so glad that I did. What did you I uh, saw, well, real quick? I saw yes. an interview with uh, an African American reporter and Tyler hero. And her question was basically like, so what's it like to not be treated as a white guy on the basketball team? <laughs> it was just super awkward moment. Where he's just like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know? and it's just like, Whoa, where's this going? 2020 even, is fucking even weird. More 
even more awkward. Uh, Duncan Robinson was standing right next to him, and she didn't ask him the same question <laughs> because he's totally treated like a white guy on a basketball team. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, there's uh, the, the there's the Alex Caruso, which is like the you know, clear white boy of the NBA finals, like the rec league. Hustle they kind of make fun of him. Like when he, <laughs> when he does something big, the whole bench gets up. Like the fucking yeah. walk-ons are in the game. It's, I mean, <laughs> as a, you know, as a white guy with a similar hairline, it's I, when I see Alex Caruso out there, you're just, he's just a man living the dream. And it's, it's hard not to kind of root for Caruso. And they actually did a uh, wall street journal did a pretty fun deep dive, like analytical um, and and they were showing like uh, as they looked at plus minus that Alex Caruso is actually the best <laughs> LeBron James teammate in the history of LeBron James because <laughs> the plus minus difference with him on the court is more so than any other pairing he's had teammates wise which is an insane stat and and just so fun to watch like he's a guy that will Get them a couple extra possessions. Well, now we know who uh Bronny's going to be coached by in 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> Yeah, certainly. All right. So coming into this uh, series, Lakers big favorites. I, I think latest series price over at mybookie.ag. I'm looking at it right now, Sean. What do, what Minus do you got? Three forty-five. Three forty-five yep. plus two forty or plus two seventy-five. Who's betting the Heat? Yeah, I mean, as much as I like this Heat team, they're fun to root for. I think there's some value in them. Maybe game one. Maybe winning a couple games. But I mean, we have to take the the Lakers here if we were going to pick. Um, the Lakers are going to win the finals, right? Uh, I mean, McKee, McKee is there any way the to side of this. is there any way to see this otherwise? Um, yeah, I mean, I can make an argument for why the Heat will win this series, but I don't think, I just don't really think they will. I think they're a lot deeper team where, uh, you know, the Lakers only have two players who are. Scoring in the twenties, obviously, AD and uh, LeBron. Um, they only have one other player in the playoffs that's been scoring in the double digits, and that's just barely with Kuzma. He's got like ten points a game. So, uh, I, you know, if if Davis like tweaks an ankle or something like that, then yes, the Heat can definitely win this. Uh, he can lose a player and still be competitive. Whereas if the Lakers lose a star or if one of their stars is banged up, you. You're gonna have some problems. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I look at this, and there a lot of things have transpired in 2020, uh, but it's hard to imagine now that LeBron has gotten there that the Heat are gonna have a shot, and they are the fun team, right? Like in the same way Denver was fun. This is totally a bubble team. Uh, Butler's a dude that you totally want to go to war with, but I just don't see how they stop. And it's your point. It's all about AD. If AD is yeah. healthy and AD is out there, I don't know how they stop AD. And then you have just the the cultural aspect of the fact that LeBron's getting the fucking championship, right? Like, yeah, LeBron like is going to happened. quietly walk away after 2020 with one more championship and one more bullet in his gun in terms of the argument of greatest of all time. Well, and and I mean, let's just jump to, to overcome the adversity, Sean. <laughs> let's just jump to Finals MVP. You could take Lakers minus 345 for the series, or LeBron James. I mean, I don't know if my bookie has the odds up, but just kind of poking around. They I'm do. S- okay, they do. Well, I don't know uh, what is it. What is LeBron at? Because I was seeing around minus one fifty ish. What is uh? What does my bookie have it at? He has uh, minus. I think there was right, right now it's four minus one forty five. Sorry, it. Uh, I'm pulling my it computer. Up. Yeah. Um, minus one yeah, thirty. Minus one thirty. Oh right my now. god! All right. Oh Hold on. This is the. How, why would you not bet LeBron? Well, I actually have a bigger question because Anthony Davis is plus two ten. No. No. Yeah. Well, he started off at like plus one twenty five, and I think so many people were hitting LeBron over the last day that Davis has jumped to plus two ten. There's no value in take Anthony Davis, the guy. Who, First NBA Finals, he's going to be seeing. He may have a deer in the headlights, especially Shut early up. on. He's going to put up ridiculous. He has a great matchup, but it's it, dude. It's LeBron James at minus one thirty, right? This is an. I insane. don't know. I think I think that Bam Adebayo is a really bad matchup for AD. Actually, Bam's been great on defense. Um, you think I, Bam I, can shut him down? I'm not saying he's going to shut him down, but he can slow him down for sure. Well, and he's dealing with that ankle stuff, and he's always a guy that kind of like falls awkwardly and and like, oh, I, I, I'm nicked up. I got to sit down for a little bit. Like, 
LeBron at minus one thirty. I mean, Jesus Christ. Here's put, the thing. Put the mortgage it's, on that one. Yeah, you know, these these finals MVPs in particular are all about the story, you know. And LeBron already started setting the table for finals MVP by complaining about not getting more first place yes. votes for MVP. It's true. So I feel like he's already, you know, LeBron, you know, he's smarter than the rest of us. He's thinking three steps ahead. That's what that's why he was complaining, so he could get the finals MVP. Yeah. It does seem odd that we're sitting here in a situation where the Lakers are minus three fifty, which feels it should be like minus five hundred. And you can you can actually bet LeBron for almost even even money to win the MVP. Uh insane. And who are you taking on the Heat though? Like if you if you had to pick one, if you if you cause it clearly if you like the Heat, you're gonna have better odds on them picking who you think the MVP might be. Well and oh, I was sorry, go say, go McKay. If you are gonna take the Heat. Uh, I like the bet of uh, Bam at twelve to one mm, yeah. because uh, we've seen the Finals MVP in the past go to defensive players who shut down LeBron James, Iguodala, uh, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard, uh, yeah, Iguodala, and Kawhi Leonard. The first year he won it, and when he was so young, he was he wasn't doing a lot else but playing defense on LeBron. So uh, I think you could see the story. Everybody loves Bam's story, you know. Yeah. I I would love to see an over under on how many times the announcers say he grew up in a single wide trailer with his mom, his <laughs> single mom. Uh, it's probably going to be over twenty five, you know. Um. So, everybody loves Bam's story. I I could totally see twelve to one odds. I mean, that's why not take that. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, uh, it feels almost like if you're betting the Heat, that's the. I I don't think the price is very good at all. No, it, I, it's. I was expecting north of three to one at uh, a minimum. I'm going to go a uh, long shot. Maybe this guy is just unconscious shooting wise. Don't say Caruso. Tyler hero <laughs> <laughs> at 35 to one. He is a, he is a fun long shot because there's a, I guess there's a couple iterations where maybe he just does have like another crazy couple 35 point games and somehow they pull this thing out and at 35 to one, he's the fun you, long you shot. Need for me. One of those upsets where it's really good defense, but it's not the same guy every night. And he has like two to three big time offensive outputs. And then you have a shot. Like, you know, I think you're, I think you're throwing away your money. I mean, only <laughs> one, only one rookie has ever won uh, finals MVP. Can you, can you name who that was? Oh, that's a, uh, a rookie to win finals MVP. Yeah. It's been a while. Um, it's not Dwight Howard. I know that <laughs> Tim Duncan. No, it was magic Johnson. Oh, oh that's a good, so, that's a good trivia. Yeah. It's, I, I think it's unlikely that Tyler hero is the next coming of magic okay. Johnson. And when I'm giving my money to my bookie.ag, I'm not throwing it away. All right. I'm For supporting the, record, the presenting sponsor of the sports gambling podcast. <laughs> if that's how you have to sell yourself for the record, I'll, t- I'll take LeBron. Okay. LeBron. And then where's your long shot uh, or, I mean, I or guess longer shot? It would be, it would be bam. Okay. I, I like McKee's angle. I think it, you're picking but, Butler or bam. And there's enough narrative there to suggest that it's not just Butler. Okay, you guys with your logical analysis. All right, series Sorry. winner Alex Caruso at two hundred to one. <laughs> uh, series winner. I'm actually probably not going to play this again. The LeBron minus one thirty is just talking to me in a way that only whiskey talks to me. But um, the exact series winner, I would go Lakers four to two at plus three hundred. But I, I don't two know. games you're giving the Heat. I, I think they, I think they can pull out two, and we'll get to it when we talk about game one. But what are you doing here, McKee, on uh, exact series? I definitely think this game goes six or seven. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, so uh, I do like the Lakers to. I like that plus four fifty. The Lakers win in seven. Uh, you can also on my bookie take just how many games this will go. Period. So if you take game, I think it's going to go game six or game seven. If AD gets banged up. Maybe the Heat do play it off, and you can kind of hedge yourself. You can do game six uh, at plus two twenty, or game it goes get seven games at plus two seventy. Go ahead and take both of those. Yes, yeah, see, I, I I think we're walking into a situation where the Lake like there's a version of this where the Lakers have cruised a little bit, and now they're there. Let's finish this up. I'm gonna go out on a limb. You could do the same thing and say four games, but I'm gonna say Lakers win in that sweep. Wow. And what are you getting that at? Well, it's plus 420, baby. <laughs> Woo, it's smoking my weed. I, I'm going for the sweep. <laughs> I think LeBron, I think they, t- I, it could go five, and maybe that's the smarter bet at plus 270. 
but I'm going to, I'm going to, I saw when I saw the plus four twenty, it called to me, Sean, <laughs> it's, it's just talking <laughs> it's to a you. sign. All right. Game one. I think game one for me, I think the Lakers and uh, you and Zach were hitting on it on your podcast that they've, they haven't done well in these game ones so far in the playoffs. They granted they, they really took care of Denver, but that was Denver coming off back to back seven game series. I think game one is uh, there for the heat to take. I, I, I don't mind heat money line game one and I don't mind heat. It's down to four and a half. Would have loved to get it at five or five and a half, but I I'm on the heat plus the points wait for that five, maybe to show up again. But I, I just think this Miami team, it's going to take a little bit for the the Lakers to figure out how to play them. That's kind of my angle. But again, you and Zach brought up a great point that LeBron has dominated in game one finals before. What where, where do you see uh, shaking out game one here, Ryan? Yeah. Well, I, I would say that if you like the Lakers, um, you know, our, our, our boy Munaf uh, put together a great uh, stats breakdown uh, Lakers versus heat. And he showed how the Lakers are amazing in the first quarter. Uh, I think they are plus four margin in the first quarter in these playoffs. So uh, I would go ahead and take the uh, I would take the Lakers in the first quarter or the first half. I think you're giving up only two and a half. If you take Lakers in the first half, the heat have been a m- much more second half team. They tire the other teams out playing that zone defense, uh, just kind of, you know, bulldogging them on and on. And so I would let the, uh, I would let the Lakers get up and then maybe take the heat with, uh, you know, getting more points uh, to win after live bet that in the second half. Last thing I'll, I'll I'll say because I I want to reiterate my thoughts on how Miami's path is a little easier than the Lakers, Portland, Houston, Denver. Which one of these teams isn't favored over Miami in a seven game series series coming into the bubble or coming into the playoffs? Port- just Portland, right? They were banged up. I just I, I think the Lakers have done done better to dispose of the teams they've had to play, and I think with with the exception of Boston. You know, you you touched. I on. think Milwaukee, Milwaukee, and Boston are better teams than anybody that the Lakers played. I don't know Milwaukee, as you pointed out earlier, pretty fraudulent. I, I'd say push all the chips to the center. Lakers are walking away with this one. No, they, I would even lay the minus three, whatever, because it's such it, it's such a. I'm getting I'm getting two to one on my money the way I see it. I'd lay up to minus seven hundred on the Lakers. Oh wow! Lock city. On the series, all right. Yeah, what? What? Wow. Are you, come on, dude. I don't want to <laughs> say it, but well, know. that's why. I mean, at minus one thirty, though, that's a great. Sean, price. we've we've done this before. We've questioned LeBron. What do you mean? You you were the one arguing for I was, AD I was, MVP. I was having a conversation for the benefit of our clients and listeners. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let uh, before we let uh, McKee go, let's throw out one prop bet for Game One. And again, this is a little nugget that I I kind of had in my head. But it's nice to see the numbers backing up. A uh, shout out to Muna for uh, helping us out with some of these deep dive stats. Wise, now Kyle Kuzma in the playoffs has been averaging uh, ten and a half points per game. However, in the regular season matchups against the Heat, he's only been averaging seven. So I think, and you can get this at minus one hundred six right now uh, at my bookie. Kuzma under ten points for game one. Yes, please. McKee, do you have a uh, game one prop you like? Yeah, I would go ahead and go with LeBron James over 28 and a half points. Uh, we talked about how good he has been in game one of the NBA finals. He put up 51 points in uh, 2018 against the Golden State Warriors, uh, and he's averaged in game one's 36 and a half points. Uh, that, He's been averaging in the playoffs, I think, twenty six and a half points. So that that is a couple points higher than what he's been averaging. But I think he comes out and has a big game, sets the tone. We are lockstep because you can get LeBron James as not the favorite to be the leading scorer of Game One, plus one twenty. That's my prop. Wow! If you want to have fun, plus two twenty five on the triple double. Oh man, yeah, he loves he loves him a triple double. Lay the groundwork early for the uh, MVP story. Well, game line. Game One is a, an important game in making that case. You know, agreed. All right. Well, uh, holy shit. So much sports, so much content, jam packed episode. Make sure you subscribe to the NBA gambling podcast and make sure you check out uh Ryan rich, fat baby McKee on Twitter at the Ryan McKee. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. Make sure you throw us another one of those uh, five star reviews. 
for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. I've always thought you were the goat, LeBron. <laughs> Kramer, let it ride.